The word hybrid implies two or more, and we're looking at hybrid functions, so really it's just putting more than one function on a Cartesian plane. Here we can see a graphic of a linear function, a quadratic function, and a straight line along the y-axis being put together on a graph. We know what a linear function looks like, it's just a straight line, but when we're considering it within its domain, in this case from negative 2 to 0, we need to consider that straight line only within those x inputs. We use open circles to indicate that it's not inclusive of the x point, and we use closed circles to indicate that it is inclusive of those x points. For the quadratic component of the graph, we know what that looks like. It's kind of like a U-shaped graph, but we need to consider it within its domain. So here we are including the point 0 and excluding the point 2. So we have a closed circle to indicate that 0 and an open circle to indicate the 2. And for our last function here, we've got y equals 4, which is just a straight line for x being greater than or equal to 2. So we use an arrow to indicate that it's going to go along forever, and we use a closed circle to indicate that it's starting at the point x equals 2. So we're being asked to sketch a hybrid function in this case, and we're asked to label all key features uh, and state the range of the hybrid function. Um, and we want to know if it's continuous in the domain, right? So we'll look at all that stuff. So the first thing I noticed is that it's broken up into two different functions, right? Here we've got a, a quadratic in its root form, and here we've got a linear function. And each of those have their own separate domains. Now, when I'm putting it together, a sketch for hybrid functions, uh, the first thing that I want to check is what are the end value points of each function? So here we can see with the quadratic one, if I substitute in the end point, and let me just get rid of some of this stuff here. If I substitute this end point of negative 4, well, what I'm going to get is the point uh, negative 4, 0. And with this little square bracket indicates that I'll actually want to include that point. So I need, to, I need to be careful when I'm putting that together. And I also want to check my other end point, which is f of 2. And so I've got the point when x is 2, y is 6, um, and I'm going to be excluding that point. That's what that round bracket implies there. Um, so I know where my function is going to start and where it's going to stop, um, and that's quadratic. So I'm, I'm going to be careful of that one, and I'm just going to check the endpoints of my second function. So there I've got the endpoints of all of my functions. Now, when I'm putting my sketch together, I just want to be careful that I know that this one here is a quadratic. I know that's a quadratic, and my second one's a linear function. Now, the quadratic here, and I might just make a little note of it. Okay, the quadratic. Okay, so I know that I've got roots of uh, the quadratic here, so I need to be careful of my x-intercepts, and I'm also just going to check the y-intercepts as well. Uh, um, we get the y-intercept uh, to be when x is 0, y is negative 4, right, because those constant values on the end of the function, if we expanded it out, we would get negative 4. Uh, so we've got our quadratic labeled out carefully, and we know what a linear function looks like. Okay, it's got a negative 2 gradient, so I'm going to put together a sketch here. So here I'm just putting together some of my points on my plane. And so normally I just put the dots right in there and I label the coordinates. But just this one here, okay, we've got to refer back to our domain and we see that it's actually not inclusive. That's what that round bracket tells us. So instead of just putting in the circle, we've actually got to put an open circle to indicate that it's actually not inclusive of that point. Now we know that this quadratic here, it's got roots uh, at 1. So this is going to be a point on the quadratic and it's got a y uh, sorry, yeah, y-intercept there. Now, the turning point, oh, I should really do the working out for the turning point. So let me just do that really quick. Okay, so I've just quickly worked out the turning point there, and that occurs um, when x is 1.5 along here, y is equal to negative 6.25. So something, something down here something down there. And so my quadratic, if I just focus on it here, it's going to look like this. This is my first part of the hybrid function there. 
and it's going to go up to that point there and I've got an open circle just to indicate that it's not inclusive and so this one that's the point when uh, x is 1 y is 0 this is the point when x is negative 1.1.5 1 .1 y is negative 6.25 and then this one is when uh, x is 0 y is negative 4 so that's my quadratic component and I'm just going to finish off by sketching my linear component. So I've got a linear function, it's got a negative 2 gradient, right, as we can see uh, from that guy there. And so we've got the point when x is 2, y is negative 4. So x is 2, y is negative 4, and it is inclusive of that point. So I'll do a whole full circle with it inclusive, because here I've got my square bracket, and I've got a square bracket, so it's going to be inclusive of the other endpoint actually. Uh, and it goes all the way down to negative 8, right? Yeah, that's an 8, negative 8, and 2, comma, negative 4. And we're just going to dust off this question, right? So it's saying label all key features. We have done that. State the range of the function. Okay, well, I'd say that the range, it goes all the way up to this y value of 6, and doesn't include it, and it goes all the way down to this y value of 8, and does include it. So I'd say that we go from including negative 8 all the way up to 6 with a round bracket there, right, for the range. Um, and if it is continuous, well, what we mean by continuity is, and I'm, I'm going to go over this in a highlighter and then I'm going to undo it. It just means that as, oh, I can't even see that, that's terrible. Let me go over it in a, in a red. It means that as I'm going along my function here, do I have to lift my pen to keep going without making a trace? And I do, right? Because doing that is not ideal. So I would be tracing, 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 tracing. I'd have to lift, so I break continuity to get down to this point, and then I keep continuing. Uh, that's not really ideal, so I'd say it is not continuous. Okay, now I, I'd actually say it is a function Right, because it actually does pass the vertical line test, like it only breaks once, 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 it's breaking once. And then when you get to this point at x equals two, um, you're actually not touching the function on the quadratic because the quadratic doesn't include the point x equals two. So it's still a function, like it doesn't break the vertical line test. It's just not a continuous function because it doesn't continue along in, like, in a nice, you know, all, all of the y points don't match up. Uh, so that's, you know, that kind of breaks continuity.